Hey, I'm Longa Solo Ever, and this is Six Reasons Your Friday Night Funkin' Music Sucks. I, I'm sorry, it doesn't suck. Your music is fine. I think my songs suck, but that's just imposter syndrome. That's really just a catchy title for the YouTube channel thing. I don't take it too harshly. We are going to talk about six things you can do to improve your music right now, though. So on my Discord, I have a channel called Track Feedback, where you can send in your songs, and I'll check them out either live on stream or just right in the Discord. I'll take a listen, send you some feedback, uh, and also the other composers in the Discord, which we have so many amazing musicians in there, they'll all give feedback as well. So it's a great place to kind of cut your teeth as far as composing music goes and get started writing your own stuff. And there's a few patterns of things I see every single time with brand new composers. I'm not going to call these mistakes, but there there's certainly things you could always improve on when you're writing music. I've written a little song here that I think illustrates a lot of the problems I see with beginner composers. Uh, and we're going to go through kind of piece by piece and change things until we end up with something that I think is a lot stronger, something I think you should strive to make when you're making music. So here is, and I'm warning you, a bad song. I'm sorry. So let's take a listen to that and figure out what exactly makes this unpleasant to listen to, right? And the first thing that comes to mind when I hear a lot of beginning composers is they have the assumption that more is better. So they will keep piling on more notes, more instruments, more parts, all kind of playing, fighting with each other, and you end up with a million instruments doing a million things. I don't even have that many here, but you can already tell, even without the vocals, this is chaos. Let's take a listen to this instrumental. The human ear can only really focus on three different sounds at once. So between percussion and bass and chords, you're already kind of covering three, and then vocals is throwing another thing in there on top of that. You can see how this adds up really quickly to be too much for a listener, especially when we have several other things going as well. Just to sum it up, we have drums, bass, uh, this, this little pluck sound. We have a synth pad. And then I, these are like the extra, the too much ones I added that we're going to take out. This is uh, like some crazy. I swear I hear something like that on like every other new beginners post. It's like some crazy textural thing. And then some like running plucks. Honestly, each of those on their own is fine and they'd probably work in a song. But if we take a listen to the whole instrumental as it is. And then we get rid of these. It still works, and now there's room for vocals. Now it feels like you could drop vocals on top of this, and it wouldn't be that bad. Unless, of course, the vocals sound like this. And this brings me to my next point. Your notes are not in key. Now, the key is the collection of notes that fit together, that all sound good together when you're writing songs. And it's really important to know what key you're in when you're writing music. Now, a lot of beginning Friday Night Funkin' musicians will often write their music with pretty much just one note in the background. So you can see, that's really all that's happening here. The bass is just playing a single note. Our chords are just playing a single A minor chord. And then these plucks are just playing some of the notes of that chord as well. And that's cool. These all fit together for that reason. If I mute the vocals, it all still sounds cohesive. It sounds good. But the vocals are not in the key of A minor. They're something that maybe sounds okay on its own to a beginner. Like, I, I could hear that in a Friday Night Funkin' mod. I'd rather not hear it, but I could. But when you write without knowledge of the key that you're in, it's like painting when you're colorblind, which I am, so I can say that. 
If you're not aware of what notes fit together, you're going to make this mistake. And so it's really important that you learn even just the tiniest bit of music theory. The, the simplest bit of music theory I can give you to help you avoid this problem, avoid the black keys. Just play the white keys, the ones that aren't sharp, like C sharp here, uh, or flat. You are looking for just the natural notes. That will give you either the key of C major or the key of A minor. And if you focus on either C or A while only playing the white notes, you will have notes that fit together in a nice cohesive way. If you want more information on that, please go watch my How to Write Music for Friday Night Funkin video. I went into way further detail about that. It was a nice whole stream where he wrote a song start to finish and talked a little bit about keys and chords and how the notes fit together. But for simplicity's sake, play the white keys, focus on A or C, uh, A giving you a minor sad sound, and C giving you a major happy sound. That's really simplifying things, but that's the general idea. And you will be good. So here is the same instrumental, but with a melody I've written that only uses natural notes, only uses the white keys. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Okay, already it sounds so much more cohesive. In my opinion, the next thing that's kind of dragging this down right now is that there's no break in there. There's no room for the ear to rest and listen to what it's just heard and get excited about the next thing. You are just pelting the listener with a nonstop barrage of notes that mean absolutely nothing. It's like when a movie is all action sequence, start to finish. At a certain point, the explosions just stop mattering because you don't even know what's going on anymore, right? And this is the same thing. When you just pelt the listener with this endless rain of 16th notes, it's just not fun to listen to. So add some breaths in your melodies. Add longer notes and breaks in between them. Here's a similar melody, but with some breaks in the vocals. <laughs> And that already is something that's a lot more listenable. It's starting to be something you can hear as a melody, something you could sing back to yourself, something that could get stuck in your head, right? And that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to write music that people enjoy. This is a music game first and foremost, right? That's my opinion on it, at least. My next point gets a little more advanced, and it's the idea that your melodies are not repeating enough. Now, saying a song is repetitive often sounds like a, a, a diss to the song, but some amount of repetition means that the listener gets excited about the thing they're going to hear. A good song is like 50% surprise and 50% giving the listener something they've already heard, because when the ear picks up on something it's familiar with, even if it just heard it a few seconds ago, you, you get this little dopamine rush of anticipating the thing you've already heard and, and proving yourself right that what you're hearing is what you think it is, the, the thing you've been anticipating for a few seconds. So this is the same melody, but adjusted so that the second half repeats the first. And I'm going to go into exactly how it does in just a second. But let's take a look first. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear how in the second half, you, you could kind of feel like you knew where it was going? Let's take a listen again. I'm going to get out the notepad here so we can actually talk about this. This uses something called an A, B, A, C structure. And what that means is we are starting off with one musical idea, which we'll call A. And then our second measure introduces some new concept. So we have A and B. Then we go back to A. And now we go to something new, C. So follow along. We have A, B, A, C. And I want to be clear. These are not like the letter names or the chords or anything. This is confusingly using letters as well. But this just refers to the first thing you introduce is called A, the second thing you introduce is called B, and then we go back to the first thing again, and then we go to a new thing. So it's called C. That's all this is. That's called phrase structure, and it's something that really helps you write. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a more advanced concept that really helps you write catchy melodies. Take a listen to it one more time and see if you can pick up on that phrase structure. <laughs> Okay, 
So your melodies can be repetitive. Your instrumental might be too repetitive. Something else I see with a lot of beginners, I'll go listen to their song, and it is the same four-measure instrumental or two-measure instrumental for like five minutes. And no one wants to listen to that. No one wants to hear five minutes of the same instrumental. If I just sat here, how long would it take for you to get bored of this instrumental? Sounds cool. Starting to starting to get a little old. Are we going somewhere? Are we going anywhere? Are we going anywhere else? Can we please go somewhere else? That's where I'm at after like four measures, and that's why I want to go somewhere. And that's why it's a really, really good idea to take your instrumental somewhere else. So after a few measures of that, after preferably an even number of runs through that that instrumental. Let's go somewhere else. Here we go, taking it to a new section. What does it sound like? Nice. We took it somewhere else. So you need to introduce different sections in your song, in your arrangement. This section also has the the nice benefit of actually using different chords in it. We're not just hanging out on a single note anymore. We're not just staying on A, which only gives us so much to work with, right? And we're just hanging out on A, whatever. But then we go to an F chord, and then G, and back to A. Now we're moving around. And the side effect of this is we now suddenly have chord tones that we can emphasize in the melody. So when an F chord is playing, there's those three notes, F, A, C. We can use those in the melody. And then in a G chord, we have G, B, D. When you emphasize notes in the chords, you get like bonus points with the listener's ear. It just feels like it it, it just fits together so nicely. So with that in mind, this next section makes use of chord tones in the melody. Our first chord is an F chord. F, A, C. And we're using A and F and C as main notes in our melody, emphasizing that. In our second measure, it moves to a G chord. G, B, D. And we're emphasizing those notes here. Right? And then we're finally back to an A minor chord, so I'm back to playing with the A minor scale again. Introducing a little bit of that repetition, playing this phrase twice. Right? Getting that repetition in there so the ear remembers, oh, I know this part. It's coming up again. Cool. This is also why it's so cool to have that call and response thing that's like kind of naturally baked into the Friday Night Funkin' style, where the opponent sings something first and then boyfriend sings something. You naturally get that repetition in there, but it's so nice just to also have it happen within each melody. The last thing I want to talk about is the concept of tension and release. There's an underlying sense of how much energy is in a song at any one time, how how much it's pushing the listener with what kind of energy it's putting out, how much tension it's building up in their mind, in their ear. And when a song keeps that tension at a single contained level throughout the entire song, it kind of gets either exhausting to listen to if it's high tension the whole time or boring if it's low tension the entire time and a good song pumps that back and forth relieving the tension just as it gets to be too much and then ramping it back up just as soon as the listener relaxes 
There's a lot of ways we can do this, but there's a few things I like to do. If you want to change the amount of tension in a song, you can either add or remove instruments, which is something I did in the chorus here. I added this very subtle uh, little arpeggio instrument. It's not adding too much. It's not as crazy as that stuff I was showing you at the beginning. It's just a little bit. Listen to it come in as we go into the chorus here. Here it comes. See how it just raised the stakes just a little, just a tiny bit. The other thing we can do is take away instruments or make what they're playing less intense, make it change. So listen as we go back to our first section, but now the drums are different. You could lower the intensity level even more by getting rid of this pad. Let's check it out. And now we're relaxed. Let's bring it back up. Do you see how we're, we're emphasizing and then kind of relaxing the listener's ear a little bit as we're playing? It leads to this nice kind of curvature in the intensity of the song that keeps people listening. It keeps people engaged with the song throughout. The last detail I like to do that kind of puts the polish on the song over the edge is using effects like this to push us into and out of each section. Uh, so there's two effects I always use. You can grab these specific ones if you have splice. It's Cashmere Short Sweep 08, Cashmere Sweep Down 32. Um, and all they do, the short sweep pushes up into a section. So here I've placed it right at the end of our, our chorus, our B section, going back into that quiet part we were just working with and listen to what it does. Do you hear how it kind of just propelled you forward a little bit into it? Let's listen without and with this little booster here. So here's without. And we're there, like, okay, we arrived, fine. Now let's listen with this, and I'm gonna add a sweep down after. Does that feel like it hit harder? I think so. So if you listen to my songs, you'll pick up on these going into and out of every section. I will literally just do this at the beginning and end of each part of a song. Check it out. I'll even do it within a song, like every eight bars. It just keeps pushing the song forward. Here it comes again. And that's it. Those are all my secrets for making great songs. Obviously, it goes deeper than that. There's mixing and mastering concepts. There's deeper music theory that I'm always applying. But these six ideas, keeping your instrumentals simple and easy to focus on, making sure your vocals are in key with the song you've written, leaving some space in your melody so it's not a, a nonstop barrage of endless notes, having some repetition in your melody from phrase to phrase, letting your instrumental change up between sections using different chords and then using those chord tones in your melodies to make it all fit together in a nice cohesive way. And then using the concepts of tension and release to have your song keep propelling itself forward, keep the listener engaged with these concepts, including with nice effects like this. Thank you so much for watching. Go make some awesome music. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell down below for more videos like this one, along with covers and gameplay videos. We're playing Friday Night Funkin' on stream every week and making music live right here. So come hang out. We have a blast. You can also join the Discord and get some feedback on your tracks. I'll put the link in the description down below. Thank you for watching. Go make some music and I'll see you next time.